Look down at our planet from space and you see that two-thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by water. The atmosphere and the ocean are linked by the exchange processes taking place at the surface. The wind is one of the forces driving the ocean currents and so affects the exchange between ocean and atmosphere of heat and volatile pollutants such as the greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane. Surprisingly, these air-sea interaction processes which influence the global climate and the global distribution of specific chemicals are themselves governed by turbulent and molecular mixing processes just a few millimetres beneath the surface. Because the sea surface is agitated by wind waves, it is difficult to investigate these small-scale air-sea interaction processes experimentally. So many basic questions remain unanswered. For example, how does the exchange rate of gases depend on the wind speeds and the waves? Or to what extent can gas bubble clouds generated by breaking waves enhance the gas transfer rate? It is almost impossible to answer such questions by fieldwork. Measurements under controlled conditions are required. Traditionally, linear wind wave facilities have been used. The largest facility of this kind is located at Delft in the Netherlands. A huge building covers a water channel 8 meters wide, 100 meters long and 0.8 meters deep. Over this, a wind tunnel has been built to generate wind. Unfortunately, these large linear facilities have significant disadvantages for the study of small-scale air-sea interaction processes. First, only rather short wind waves can be generated. Moreover, the wind wave field is uneven. It starts with small ripples at the entrance of the facility and the wavelength gradually increases along the facility towards the beach at the end. However, there is a better idea. An annular water channel has no beginning and no end. The wind amplifies the waves until they reach an equilibrium. Much larger wind waves can be generated than in a linear facility of the same size and because the waves are identical everywhere in the facility, experiments are more easily carried out. The first circular facility was built in 1950 in the Soviet Union by the father of Soviet physical oceanography, Vasily Shulaykin. The huge 40-metre diameter facility is located at Katsivila on the Crimea at the Marine Hydrophysical Institute. It was used to study the creation of waves by wind until 1974. Without knowing the earlier Russian work, the founding director of the Institut für Umweltphysik at the University of Heidelberg, Professor Karl Otto Munich, constructed a small circular facility about 25 years ago. The facility was nicknamed the windmill because of the large four-bladed rotating paddle wheel used to generate the wind over the annular water channel. This small facility and a larger four-meter diameter successor produced a wealth of new scientific results. When it was finally decided that the Institut für Umweltphysik would get a new building, it was clear to us what we wanted. We would build a new circular wind wave facility. It should be large enough to simulate small-scale air-sea interaction processes realistically, yet it should also be versatile enough to use state-of-the-art imaging techniques to gain direct insight into the mechanism of air-sea gas exchange and related processes, and finally to solve the mysteries 
that have puzzled scientists for years. The facility was named Aeolatron, after the Greek god of the winds, Aeolus. The platform and the frame of the facility were built of wood. Carpenters and many other construction workers were involved in the building of the facility. But the students and the scientists of the research group also did much of the construction work themselves. In the last one and a half years, they have spent countless hours building and equipping the Eolatron. At the inauguration of the building on May the 6th, 1999, Minister President Teufel stressed the commitment of the state of Baden-Württemberg to science and education. Unser Land lebt nicht von Rohstoffen, sondern unser Land lebt von der Qualität seiner Menschen, von der Qualität seiner Bildungseinrichtungen, von der Ausbildung, vom Wissen, von der Motivation zu lebenslangem Lernen, von der Bereitschaft zu zusätzlicher Qualifikation. Rektor Professor Siebke pointed out the uniqueness of the Eolatron and invited those present to visit the facility. Und die weltweit einmalige experimentelle Forschungseinrichtung Eolatron, ein ringförmiger Windwellenkanal mit 10 Meter Durchmesser, den Sie nachher besichtigen können. Well, the Minister President certainly did not miss the chance. And he was given a first-hand explanation of the Eolatron. The Eolatron is a unique facility in many respects. The annular channel is 0.6 meters wide and 2.4 meters high. The maximum water depth is 1.2 meters. The large water depth, deeper than almost all other wind wave facilities, allows larger waves to travel faster. Wind is generated by a rotating paddle wheel. The lightweight paddles are attached to the fibre-reinforced orange band. 64 small DC motors drive this band via inline skater wheels. The whole construction has the advantage that the wind speed can be changed within seconds, so that experiments can also be performed under rapidly changing winds. The Aeolatron has excellent thermal insulation due to a 10 cm thick styrofoam layer on the inner side of the wooden frame. In effect, the facility is like a big thermos. And the net heat flux through the water surface can be measured by high precision measurements of the water temperature. The Eolatron can be operated at water temperatures between 5 and 35 degrees centigrade. The humidity and temperature of the air can be controlled independently using a two-stage air-water heat exchange unit. First, to cool the air down in order to adjust the absolute humidity and then to heat the air up again. The Eolatron is a chemically clean environment. It can be operated either with deionized water or with artificial seawater. Separate tank batteries are available. Since the whole facility is airtight, a new technique could be developed to measure the gas transfer rate. This could be done within a few minutes by using various optical techniques to measure the increase of gas concentrations in the airspace. However, the most important experimental capabilities of the Aeolatron are imaging techniques, since these give a direct insight into the processes. A central optical experimental stand has been constructed so that at the same footprint at the water surface multiple parameters can be made visible simultaneously. The slope of the waves can be coded in colour by a colour graduated light source through the large optical window at the bottom of the facility. A camera mounted above the facility takes image sequences that show all waves, from tiny capillary waves to large gravity waves. 
thermal images are taken through an oblique window from the side of the facility. These image sequences show the fine-scale temperature fluctuations at the water surface that reveal the structure of the surface turbulence and how it is influenced by waves. The patterns are completely different at low wind speeds without waves and at high wind speeds with waves. The Eolatron is now operational. Because of its unique features, it will certainly attract researchers from all over the world to perform experiments together with the Heidelberg research groups for years to come.